In this video I'd like to talk you through the new textures, watercolour inks, what their properties are and all the different things that you can be doing with them. So these are the colours, there's two sets at the moment, both with five bottles of 15mm ink in them each. So we've got our bright selection and you can see the colours on here and then we have our urban selection. Now the urban works really well with the texture steampunk collection as well. So what I've done here, because the ink is so saturated and so concentrated, although you can just see the colour, uh, the bottles are still quite dark. So I've added myself little watercolour swatches on the top. So I've got an idea of what's in each bottle underneath. And I keep them in the packaging as well because I just love it. So what can you do with these? Well, there is a lot. Now, you may not have ever done any sort of watercolour painting before, and that's OK, because there's an awful lot of other things that we can be doing with them. So I will just bring in, first of all, some watercolour paper. Let's do a little bit of your general watercolour first so you can see the sort of effects that you can be getting. Now, if you've never watercoloured before, it's really, really simple. So watercolour is a nice, easy medium to use. I'm going to take the hot pink. Now each of the bottles has inside its own dropper attached to the lid, a little glass dropper there, so you can dispense just the tiniest amount of ink as you need it. Now I've got here a, a palette that I use a lot, so it's not perfectly clean, but you'll be able to see two drops there. That's all I'm putting into this palette, and I'm going to water that down with some uh, just plain water, clean water. Uh, before I do that, let me just wet my brush. I'll bring that water in so you can see. The cup looks dirty, but the um, water inside is perfectly clean. It's just the enamel on the inside has worn away. Uh, I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of this concentrated ink and just run that on my paper. And you can see how beautifully bright that colour is. Now, if I add some water into this next palette and just bring over a tiny little bit of colour, I've then got a very pale wash that I can use if I want to. And you can of course mix these colours as well. Now into that pale wash here, I'm going to take my concentrated ink and just dip in a tiny amount of concentrated colour. Look at that beautiful effect, that's stunning. So you can now be painting if you want to. If you love things like uh, brush lettering, maybe you love to just do watercolour flowers for example, you can be creating those with these inks really nicely just by using the right sort of brushes for the right sort of shapes. As you can see you can build up petals like so. But what if you're not confident with a brush? So let's take a look at another technique for you. So I've just brought in a glass mat here to protect my surface and to work on. If you don't have a glass mat, something like an ink blending mat will work well for this also. So I'm going to bring in a spritz of water onto my mat. Not a lot, not too much, just a little bit to dampen the surface to start with. Let's choose a couple of colours. I think I'm going to go with the purple from this one and I always keep them in the same order so that I know which is which. You could also create yourself if you wanted to some little label stickers to maybe go on the back or on the bottom just so you can see the colour that's inside and I'm just going to drop uh, one drop there and you can see how how deeply concentrated this ink is so I've just dripped it onto my surface. Bear in mind at the moment the size of the paper that we're going to be using. Okay, Shall I come back to this pink again? And I'm going to do two drops of that also. There we go. Now what I found with these inks as well is they don't stain surfaces so things like your paint palette and your blending mat they won't stain they will clean up beautifully. So I'm going to take some more water now and I'm just going to spritz there we go. So a few spritz of clean water just from a little mister there and now I can take a small piece of watercolour paper. So just a sheet here, this doesn't have to be a really good quality paper either um, because we're not doing detail here, we're getting an ink splodge. So let's create a background. So I'm just going to press that down into the ink and then just give it a little bit of a turn. I'll go up and down a bit. Okay, now that is soaking up that ink. We can see some of it coming out. And look, we've created our very own background. Now you can go in 
and you can add to this if you want to. If you've missed areas of the paper, maybe you want to build up the colour even further and you can keep going like this. You will probably get messy fingers, but it is beautiful for creating really lovely watercolour backgrounds that you probably wouldn't be able to create um, if you were trying to purposely do it. Now what I tend to like to do is just spritz my paper where I've got lines. So as you can see here, I'm just going to give it a little spritz of water just to allow those edges to bleed into one another. And I'm just going to leave that now to dry for a few moments. So now I've just dried off that ink, allowed it, you can allow, allow it to air dry or you can take your heat gun to it if you want to. I would then trim that down just to conceal the edges that we've missed. But I want to show you another quick technique that you can be doing as well. So let me take a brush and some clean water, bring this in. Now you can do this with a water spritzer as well, but I quite like to use quite, um, quite large droplets on here. So I'm going to use the brush and water and I'm just going to flick some water, clean water, all over my dried ink. You can do this while it's damp as well, but you'll get the same effect in the end. Now I'm going to leave that water just to sit on the watercolour ink for a few moments. Now this might be um, a minute or two, but already hopefully you can see that that is starting to bleach out the colour where the water is. The longer we leave this, the more it's going to pull the colour. So effectively what's happening is the water is diluting the ink in the paper, pushing the colour out of the paper and getting into those fibres there. You can speed up this process with a heat gun or you can also, if you want to, just take a piece of kitchen towel over the paper and you can now see those wet splodges and the ink coming through and you can lift that up to reveal your beautiful watercolour splats over your ink. I think that's a lovely technique and really nice if you're trying to create something like a galaxy background. Okay, another technique for us, let's take a smaller piece of card. Um, I like to do this if I'm trying to edge paper, particularly watercolour paper. So I'm going to take a brown because a brown is a colour that I would usually use if I was going to be um, doing some distressing on the edge and making a piece of paper maybe look aged. And I'm just going to run some clean water along the edge of my paper just to dampen it a little bit. I don't want to, if I use the spritz, you'll obviously cover a larger area. At least with the paintbrush we can be quite precise about only going around about a centimetre in to the edges. Now I'm going to empty my dropper. This is the brown, so I'm going to empty the dropper. So I've just got ink on the outside of the dropper and I'm going to pop this little um, indentation onto the edge of my paper. And I'm just going to run that along there and I'm going to allow the colour to wick into my paper and it's a really lovely neat way of edging your paper. You'd have to allow this to dry of course and if you find that your paper has already dried too much and the water is not pulling the ink away then you can just add a little more water with your paintbrush. So apply the ink. If I just show you like so, let's just add a little more water with our paintbrush. Just dampen that up again. That will start to pull that away. So there's another effect for you for adding a beautiful edge to your papers. And you're really using very little ink at all because you're just running the very edge of the dropper along the edge of the paper. You can also create your very own spritzes and you can do this by either using the colours individually or you can mix them. So let's add a red into our water spritzer. I've got just under half of the amount of water in here. You can fill it up if you know you're going to use it all, but if it's for a small project, um, I would just say half fill your water bottle. And I'm just going to take just one drop of red in there. And that really is quite um, a deep colour, quite a concentrated colour. So I don't need any more than that. So pop my lid on there. Give that a little bit of a shake. Let's bring in our cardstock that we did the edge on, just so we can see the colour. 
So a couple of spritzes to allow that red to come through. There, we can start to see that. That's beautiful. So there's a nice pale spritz for us that we can see there. Now, of course, you can deepen the colour as well by adding more ink. But what you can also do is add a different ink. So let's bring in a blue. So, of course, blue and red together would make a purple. So I'm going to add two drops of blue into there and we'll see what colour this comes out as now when we mix it. And it's well worth doing yourself a little chart, a little test chart, to see what colours you'll result in. So a few spritzes to get past the red that's in the tube and it starts to become purple there. Now we've now got our very own purple spritz as well and you can keep playing and experimenting with these colours as much as you like. But this again has created a really lovely background in different colours. If you like to use jelly plates, you can also use these inks with that. And I would say use your paint as a base, as it's thicker, and then apply your colour. So you only need your white paint then. So let's add a little bit of white paint and get this spread across our surface. And then let's choose our colours to mix in. Let's start with pink at the top. And I like to leave some of the white coming through as well. Um, let's go down to purple next. And then let's move on to the blue after that down the bottom. Now this is quite a lot of ink for one jelly plate, but you'll get lots of impressions from it. Let's start mixing this colour across. That is beautiful. So let's transfer that onto our paper. That is gorgeous. I love that. And you can keep adding colour if you want to. So let's bring in some orange. Let's put the orange up the top here. And then maybe some green down the bottom where the cooler colours are. And let's Aren't they just beautiful? absolutely stunning and then of course you can be applying your textures as well. A fun technique to try with the inks is the shaving foam technique which creates a marble effect. So I've got an old tray here that I'm no longer worried about getting messy and I've filled it with shaving foam and now we can start adding in some of our ink. So I would say start just a couple of drops at a time and we can work our way up if we want stronger colours. So green, I'm going to go with blue. I'm using the brights here. So just dripping it around maybe between five and ten drops of each colour. Now let's add in a pink as well. So I don't really want to get the pink too close to the green because of course red and green make brown. There we go, I've added quite a lot of that. Now, you need something old to stir this with or I like to use uh, like a kebab skewer. And we're just going to mix these around in a sort of swirling motion, trying not to mix the colours together too much. So just be conscious of going over a marbled area, an area that's already mixed quite well too much. I'm just going to keep working around this. I must say this is much easier when you have a good quality shaving foam. The less expensive the shaving foam, very often the harder this is to do. So I've got that mixed up quite well now. So I am going to place my paper inside. I'm just flattening the surface out a little bit. Take the excess off of my skewer. 
and then I've just got a piece of paper. In fact, I'm going to trim this down ever so slightly. So I'll put that in half. Let's place this into our shaving foam. There we go. You may get messy fingers, so you might want to wear gloves. But it's really good fun, especially to do with children as well. So I'm now going to take this out. And what I'm going to do is take that and wipe the surface. Just with a piece of kitchen towel, I'm just removing the excess shaving foam there. And then we've got our marbled piece of paper. One last technique for you that you can be doing with your inks amongst many others um, is actually making your own coloured texture pastes, um, three dimensional pastes, it may be your crackle paste as well, your glitter paste, whatever it may be, things like that, or of course your acrylic paint. So I'm going to take uh, this really thick heavy body texture paste onto a glass mat or a resistance surface so you can use uh, a blending mat, something like that. Let's take, for example, let's take the purple make ourselves a purple paste and I'm just going to add two drops, two drips out of all of that bottle into this paste and just mix folding just as you would baking. Now if you love stenciling you can actually use this as it is to get that marble effect so it's not completely blended into a smooth colour at the moment but if you don't like that marble effect of course you can continue and you can keep blending this until it's nice and smooth and we've got a beautiful lilac colour there and I would suggest only do this uh, in a small amount at a time because of course you can change the colours. Now the beauty of this is not only can you change the colours uh, with the original inks that we've got but you can also mix your inks so we can add in a tiny bit of red here, just one drop and we'll see what colour that creates. So the same technique, I'm just going to scrape some off of the edge of here and mix this one drop of red in and you can see how far this ink really does disperse through that paste and we've now got a much warmer, beautiful warm red purple colour and the more red we add the warmer that's going to get. If we wanted to add more blue that would of course be a cooler colour. Isn't that wonderful? So we've got many different colours that we can be mixing and matching and combining to our heart's content if we want to. We can pick all the colours of the rainbow and mix them up. You can of course use your black to make shades much darker um, and you can use your brights for vibrant colours and your urbans for your cool, more muted tones. So enjoy playing with the inks. There's lots and lots you can do with them. I'm sure there's many other techniques which I'll be exploring over the coming week, weeks and months and posting lots of videos here for you as well.